Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on mysterious and weird true stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 102, written by Man on Road Throwaway. A night's drive and a slim man by the road. Creepy as hell. I was driving down a long, dark, secluded rural road at 11.30 p.m. and spotted an extremely tall, skinny, pale, around 7 foot tall, completely still man on the side of the road. When I drove along the entire road, he didn't move once and stayed completely frozen. When I first spotted him, I literally thought he was propped up like a mannequin due to his stillness. The closer I got, it looked like he was standing on top of a scooter-like transportation device, but didn't move at all. He looked as though he was wearing long pants and a long-sleeved t-shirt or jacket, despite the fact that it was an extremely hot night. It was unlike anything I've ever seen before. He looked so still and inhuman. He looked frozen. He looked like a mannequin. I can't even explain it. Someone else was in the car with me and saw the exact same thing so I'm not crazy. Has anyone else seen a man or entity like this? Case Notes, file number 102. Well, that gives off Slender Man vibes. I take it you weren't able to get a glimpse of his face if he had one. I wonder if these entities are perhaps related to aliens. Woohoo, back to aliens. <laughs> it stands to reason though, there could be multiple species of aliens. Someone even left a comment on the channel saying that, perhaps as a theory, they are us from the future, and maybe others are actually extraterrestrials, the standard alien just from another solar system. But either way, I wouldn't want to approach the slim man. Case file number 103, written by user Rubens Mejia. A friend so pure, even death won't stop him from helping. I want to share this experience that happened to me around 15 years ago when I started to study in a town away from my parents' home. There was one man, let's call him Tony, who was a good friend of my father, helped him at work sometimes, hence, I hung out with them usually. When I was 17, I moved to a bigger city to start university, so I traveled every two months to visit my parents for long weekends or vacations. After my second year away, this friend Tony died from alcohol abuse. My father told me on a phone call how it happened, or at least how he had heard it had happened. Around two months later, on Dia de los Muertos, Day of Death, here in Mexico, I went to visit my parents, also to go visit the tombs of the family, as the tradition goes, and at this point, I literally forgot about Tony's death. The apparition came around because I didn't catch the bus that arrives during the day to my parents' hometown, so I was forced to take one that arrives there around 2am. It's quite a small town, so since I couldn't find any taxi near the bus station, I decided to walk home. Around 5 blocks away from the house, I had to pass on a bridge where people say that a decapitated donkey spirit scares people during the night. I was a bit scared to be honest. But then, suddenly. This friend, Tony, reached me on his bike. I didn't mention that he always moved around on a bike, and asked me if I was just arriving from university. Maybe because I was originally thinking about the decapitated donkey, I completely forgot about the fact that Tony was supposed to be dead. So I started to talk to him. We walked passing the bridge and a couple more blocks for around 4 or 5 minutes, talking about the school, the food on the other city, and stuff like that. Just one block away from my parents' house, he told me, Okay, I have to go check some things out over there, pointing in another direction. But keep safe, say hello to your father for me. We said goodbye, and then I got home. Since it was early morning, I walked directly into my room and waited for the next day to go see my parents. It was until next morning when I was just about to tell my father about Tony, when I remembered that he was supposed to be dead already. At that moment, I didn't tell my parents, but a bit later into the day, my father told me that he saw me arriving. He asked me if I was drunk or something because he saw me talking to nobody, and then I told him. 
I think it was some kind of company on the bridge that I was afraid of because of the stories and also because of the donkey story. I didn't even pay attention to the fact that my company was someone I knew was already dead. It is kind of funny for me and actually never felt afraid of that moment. Thank you to Tony, old friend, that was there with me, even in death. Case Notes, file number 103. When someone dies, their echo left behind is an imprint of who they were inside. That's my theory anyways. Your friend Tony clearly was a protector. Whatever traumas he couldn't overcome himself, he knew that you were afraid and wanted to comfort you, to shield you from whatever horrors existed in that place, either just as a myth swirling in your brain, or in reality. It's beautiful. No more needs to be said. But do let us know if Tony ever pops in for another visit. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And feel free to watch more on my channel. I have a lot more content.